I've been sitting on this footage for a while now, just trying to determine what exactly I want to do with it. Well, for lack of anything terribly interesting to say, uh, I opted to just show it all off and give my basic impression of it. A few months back, I was invited by a friend of mine, a fellow reenactor and a British military enthusiast, to a gun range for some live firing. And what better way to start it all off than by firing my number one Mark III short magazine Lee Enfield, or SMLE. It was the standard British infantry weapon of the First World War, and mine specifically is actually dated to 1917. And here you're about to see the first time I ever fired it. Live, that is. Have you, have you fired this rifle before? Nope. Okay. I have only ever well, fired using for a second. Now, if you're experienced in these sorts of things, you can probably tell that I am less than comfortable in this position, and my form leaves much to be desired. You see, before this, I had only ever fired my musket live, and that always standing or kneeling. I'd never fired anything sitting down like this, and while I suppose it technically helps to improve one's accuracy to have a bag like this to rest the rifle on, it just didn't feel right to me and I couldn't get used to the posture. If I had better form, and indeed better posture, I'm sure that my shot would have been much better as well. Uh, but all the same, here it is. The first time I ever fired a non-black powder rifle. Okay, got you at about three o'clock, about six inches off. Not bad. How does that right. feel? Good fun. Although I'm not used to sitting down. Then I decided, oh, enough of this down. cowardly 20th century sitting down nonsense. Let's take bad. a proper presenting position and lay into the target. Or at least to the general vicinity of the target. This happened before. And I... Hold up. I think it was before. Oh, that'll do it. Yep. Did you bring... And thus, on my second round, the cartridge fell to pieces. And while the bullet fired, the actual brass got stuck inside the barrel as the primer fell off. Great. Turns out this was a check reloaded round that my host was trying out for quality. It failed the test. My rifle was out of commission for the rest of the day, but I was able to remove the brass later on with no problems, and a valuable lesson was learned. Don't trust check reloaded rounds. Anyhow, thankfully, my host also happens to be every bit as eccentric as myself, and he also happens to have three other SMLEs for us to fire. Here he is, actually hitting his target. Right bottom. At uh, right 10 o'clock. Okay. Uh, is that it? That's it. I tried firing a few more times while sitting, and it just didn't work out very well for me. So I decided to have a little bit of fun and just fire a few times quickly down the range while standing. I didn't hit anything, I was off by a couple of inches every time, but it certainly does make one feel powerful to fire so rapidly down range, eh? And speaking of power, well, how about firing the thing as it's meant to be fired for once, with bayonet fixed? It added a great deal of weight to the piece, but something about it just felt so much more right than before. And, well, hey, what do you know? My shots actually started improving. Whoa, not bad. I feel better. Good wind, it's a little high. Unless, of course, the poor gentleman was just trying to make me feel better, which I admit is also very possible. We also had some rounds of a more historic significance. So this is the 1943 round. Uh, 1941 Dominion Arsenal, Canadian. At first it was strange to fire an antique round, but I suppose that so many millions upon millions of them have been produced that it really isn't destroying any actual history, and, well, in all fairness, this was the intended purpose of the things when they were made, to be fired. Well, maybe to be fired at a German, but I wasn't exactly going to be recreating that exact condition now, was I? Overall, though, I found the SMLEs to be a lot, well, easier to fire than I anticipated. The recoil wasn't that bad at all, nor was it too terribly loud. 
and I did find that my shots were improving dramatically over time, though I still have an awful long way to go in terms of my marksmanship. But then, oh yes, then came time for the real fun. The piece that I have been looking forward to firing all day. That iconic symbol of imperialism. The Martini Henry Rifle. It's on the top top, but it's not proofing like the other one. One and a half switch. It always shoots the one half guard. Ah, uh, you can just hear Michael Caine shouting as you chamber every fresh round. The Martini Henry, as you can see, is a much more intense sort of gun. The rounds are just massive. There's an ungodly amount of stopping power in each one of them. The bullet with the force around the dot. And the recoil was like a hammer slamming into my shoulder when compared to the later more sophisticated and civilized and indeed much smaller caliber SMLE. Given the cultural context of the piece, it really does make you feel like you're tramping all your way across a hostile countryside. You're carving out an empire for queen and country, morality of it all be damned. It's a rugged gun for a rugged foreign service, and it has seen its fair share of cruelty and malice on campaign. Even the act of loading another round is a forceful thing to do. You need to really punch that lever down, lest the fired casing not fully eject and then individually slam the next one home with your thumb before closing the chamber again. Every round, much like a muzzle loader, is a far more personal feeling thing, and it's driven by an individual's martial intent. Uh, but, uh, in any case, uh, sorry about that, I think I'm getting a little carried away in the moment of everything. Uh, but, uh, point being, it was a very fun gun to shoot, very personal feeling thing to shoot. Then, lastly, as a rather interesting bridge between the lever action of the Martini Henry and the muzzle loaders that I'm more personally used to, we actually had an 1860 Snyder Enfield. To put the history of the thing very simply, the British took a muzzle loading rifled musket, the P 53, and they were converting them into breech loaders. I thought that the loading of the thing was pretty clumsy, and as was the ejecting of the cartridge. Either you have to remove the spent casing by hand, or you have to actually tilt the rifle to the side so it'll actually fall out. It's back with your first group. That one in the dark probably was a bullet flare. Here, why don't you shoot the rest of these? In comparison with the Martini Henry, so long as you push the lever down with enough force, it's really quite simple to eject and load. It was very interesting with the Snyder Enfield to see how the British are slowly figuring out how these breech loading things are going to actually be used in a military context. Now, as far as all of these more modern pieces of British military are concerned, uh, if you're interested in a more academic look at them, I would recommend the YouTube channel British Muzzle Loaders, where you can find out an awful lot more about how they all work, uh, how the drill for them was run, etc., etc. Something much more professional than I was able to offer here. And I'll be sure to include a link to that channel in the description down below. Uh, but otherwise, I hope that my own sort of limited perspective on the pieces was enjoyable. Uh, like I said, there's not all too much that I can really say, but I wanted to do something with this footage, uh, otherwise I know I'd just be sitting on it forever. Uh, I'm not sure when exactly I'll get another opportunity to go out to a range like this, but if any of you happen to have any questions or video ideas for that next time, uh, well just let me know and I'll be sure to keep an eye out for those suggestions, again, for the next time, if and when I'm able to make it out to a range like this. But in any case, thank you all so very much for watching. Of course, in particular, as always, to my ever-beneficent supporting classes on Patreon.com. It is by virtue of your financial support that I am able to carry on doing the work that I do here. And then, of course, as well to you, my dear viewer. Thank you so very much for watching. And, of course, until the next time, I am and I shall remain your most humble and obedient of servants.